This is how Chef, this is how Chef feels after he guards me. Right there. That's Chef after he guards me. He guards me, he's like, damn, I need a wheelchair. Coming into this season, we had a lot to prove because um, we didn't play to our potential last year. So we had, you know, we had to show the league what we could do, and I think we did that very well. We made a name for Proctor for the upcoming year. I think that this year went really well for us, especially just knowing how good the NEPSAC is as a league. A lot of people say it's the best league in the country, and um, just having a team with three main guys that are from New Hampshire, even though most of the teams are based out of New Hampshire, uh, they usually don't have guys that are from there. So I think we did a really good job of just proving that guys that are from the state can play with anybody in the country. I think this is the year where all the pieces came together and obviously didn't end the way we wanted to, which is championship. But um, I think we really proved that we can play with anyone being from New Hampshire and that's, that was a big step in all three of our careers. Playing for a sneaker team didn't really matter to us because we knew that we gotta just trust the process and we know the hard work regardless if we played for a sneaker team or not. We still knew with the hard work and dedication we would have made it anyway. I think playing for a non-sneaker team kind of helped us get to where we are because you know, every time we stepped on the floor we had something to prove. And it was another reason for us being in the gym every day, working so hard, pushing each other because we knew on that AAU circuit we weren't as respected because we weren't a sneaker team. Playing for a non-sneaker team we kind of had to build our name. Um, when we first started as sophomores, we were playing up in the 17 U division, and I remember our first game, we had like maybe three, four coaches there, two of them probably from UNH, so I mean, and then by the end of our junior year, we had schools like uh, Rutgers, Kansas State, Florida, a uh, bunch of schools, Cincinnati, a bunch of schools were at our games, and we basically packed the gym. So it just showed kind of how much how much work we put into the game, just knowing that we could still uh, get to any level that we wanted, even if we were a sponsor team. The three of them have changed the perception of New Hampshire basketball um, by allowing people to believe and um, understand that there are competitive players up here and that with time and effort, um, you can basically do whatever you want, no matter where you're from. I think that generally in the country there is not a lot of respect for smaller states, not just New Hampshire, in terms of athletics. And I think that um, as the times have changed and people have kind of moved around, that there are a lot of competitive players in a lot of these smaller places that they're just a, a little bit more difficult to find. Prep school basketball in New Hampshire is extremely strong and the rosters are always filled with Division I caliber recruits. But to have three actually from New Hampshire on the same roster in the same class is rare. I think it's just incredible. And it kind of shows that anything can happen because people don't think a lot of New Hampshire basketball. But I think we've, we've put a name put a name on New Hampshire basketball. We've kind of showed that hard work can get you anywhere, no matter where you're from. These guys put in the effort. They put in a lot of hard work and time and sacrifice uh, to change this perception. And I think they've done an awesome job doing it. I was so, I could not have been more proud of the example that they set for all of the kids in our program, but also for other programs, because they did not have to be there. Yes, we would have been a little disappointed if they, you know, had forgotten about the younger kids that looked up to them, but at the end of the day, they had nothing keeping them with us and keeping them at these tournaments or at these practices, and they were so invested, and they did such huge, um, influences on the younger kids, not only with their skill sets and helping them train and learn to be better basketball players, but to show the kids that, you know, being good people and continuing to give back to your community is, is important. Start the defense, start the defense. Good take. Oh, when the cameras come out, you know, I got a little something. something. 
Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, give me that, boy! Good save, boy! Let's go. <laughs> Yo, TJ swagged out right now in that jumpsuit. <laughs> Baby. <laughs> oh my god. Whoa. He cannot guard you. Let's go, boy. Good take. That's a good take. Good take. Come on, Ruff. Come on, Ruff. Come on, bro! Then, 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 really great job, then. Coach, nice job. Well, thank you. And then, coach. Working with TJ from a young age has been the best thing for me, for from a basketball standpoint. Um, he's helped me with my confidence so much. No matter what, he's always telling me, "Caleb, you're the best player on the court." And that was probably the biggest step for me in, in my basketball career because I had the skill, I had the work ethic, it was just that confidence uh, in game and he helped me with that and off the court he made sure I was always responsible. I think TJ really helped me uh, get my confidence up and just uh, helped me understand that I can make plays for myself and for everybody else and um, just his competitive spirit like even just playing with him like you just know that if you come at him he's coming right back at you because he, he hates to, to be beaten and um, He's kind of put that into me. Whether it's on the court or off the court, TJ always had my back, regardless what it was. If I had trouble with something, he was the first person I go to for help, and he always knew what to do to help me, help me in situations. When I met the, the, the kids at a young age, from the seventh, eighth graders, um, they were just regular kids who wanted to get better. And to see them go from that to you know playing travel basketball to being, becoming high-level Division One athletes, it's amazing. Um, yeah, all three are exceptionally hard workers. I mean, they're in the gym all the time. I mean, you take Caleb for an example. When I say he's a gym rat, I mean he's a gym rat. I mean, I I don't get any nights off. And as a trainer, that's what you want in a, in a player. I mean, he's always trying to find the next time to be in the gym. He's always trying to get better. He's always taking notes. I mean, the kid writes down every workout we do ever since seventh grade. So his iPhone is probably backed up with too, much, too many notes. Um, with Gio, it was more so, it was great to train him, but it was more so about building confidence with him. I mean, when I met him in seventh grade, he was probably one of the smartest basketball players that I've been around for a kid that age. But I don't think he truly believed in his natural abilities and his talents. And to see him go from being that to being a dynamic player has been a fun ride. And then when it comes to Jeff, I mean, the kid was a, a center when I first met him. Um, Ryan couldn't dribble in basketball, could shoot it a little bit, but didn't really know the game so much. But to see him grow as a basketball player, not only in his skills, but his basketball IQ, I mean, I think that's been one of the more impressive things when it comes to him. So I'm just trying to bring that to Rutgers next year. Um, knowing that I won't have them with me, I have to bring like a little part of Caleb's game with me to Rutgers. I have to bring a little part of Jeff's game with me to Rutgers. And um, just continue to do what, what we've been doing, just how we built a name. I know that a lot of people look at Rutgers negatively. So um, I just have to bring that same mentality to Rutgers, how we got to build up, bring a name, and um, just get people on board, really. And just continue to work hard with you. Geo, they're getting a very, Ruckus is getting a very skilled and yet underrated um, guard. Uh, I think he's going to bring a lot of high basketball IQ plays to that program. Um, I think he's going to bring a lot of shooting to that program. And I think he's going to bring a different dynamic where he can teach them how to be um, a better team. You know what I mean? And bring a more family atmosphere and get everyone on the same page. When I get to school, I hope to just bring my leadership qualities. Uh, to Holy Cross and I hope to be a part in the change of culture that Coach Carmody has brought and is still bringing there. Um, I'm excited to play with all those guys and this will be a good season. With Caleb, I mean, Holy Cross is getting uh, a winner, uh, a leader, uh, a guy that would do anything to play his team first, um, hates to lose, and you know, and just an absolute gem right um, I haven't met many guys probably like Caleb, 
And I think that with his work ethic, his work ethic and his leadership, he's probably going to change that program around. Uh, looking on to next year, it should be uh, should be interesting to play with the new team because playing with these guys for so long, they know how I play, uh, I know how they play, so it should be interesting um, getting to know the new guys next year and getting to uh, adjust to their style of play and stuff like that. So I'm looking forward to doing that and starting a new chapter of my life. Jeff is going to bring a whole lot of excitement and athleticism to St. Bonaventure. I mean, I don't think they've had a guy like him in quite a, few, a while, but um, besides that, they're going to get a guy that is still growing, but is a one hell of a basketball player. Um, I think that he has a, a lot of potential, and I think that with all said and done in his brother, that he could be one of the best players in the United States. I think that they've been excellent role models, not only with their work ethic on the court, but they've shown that um, they really believe in the academic part of it, and that they really believe in being good members of their community, and I think that that's so important because um, that's gonna carry on with them for the rest of their lives. <laughs> oh my stomach hurts so bad. Can we redo that? I don't want to throw out of you. James, let me do it. These ways y'all gonna eat. Be my little man out there wearing that. Yes, sir. He knows what's good. He knows what's up with it. Oh, James, see that? That's cash right there. That's what he's eating. Yo, you got it. Sure. <laughs> <laughs>